Your brush is one of the primary tools that you'll be using to make art in Magma, and we can customize it in a few ways in the tool settings panel over on the right. Initially, you may only see the option to change your brush and the brush size. To access more settings, click on the gear icon below your color wheel and select advanced mode. If you want more settings, including your color dynamics, you can switch over to full mode instead. To make better use of these different settings, it's important for us to understand how exactly the brush works. A brush stroke is made up of a series of stamps of the brush shape. To best demonstrate this, I'm going to increase the spacing of our brush. And now you can see that there is a gap between each stamp of our brush shape. The lower that value when we bring it all the way down, create stamps in very close succession to one another, so we get much smoother lines. Now onto the other settings. Of course we can adjust the brush size over here, and if you want the size to change according to how much pressure you're applying to your tablet, you can check this box. Now the lighter you press, the thinner your lines, and as you apply more pressure, they'll get thicker. Just next to that is a box that adjusts the size ratio of your brush. We have three different size ratios for our brush, with a maximum of 10 pixels, 100 pixels, and 500 pixels. The minimum size slider determines the smallest size of the brush when applying light pressure. If I leave that at zero, I can get really thin lines. Increasing the slider will mean that even when I press lightly, the brush won't go smaller than that percentage of the brush size. Adding jitter will cause each stamp of the brush to vary in size. A higher percentage means a higher possibility of different sizes for each stamp of the brush. Again, to demonstrate this, I'm going to increase the spacing, and with a high jitter value, now you can see with each stamp of the brush that it's a different size. A lower value will mean slightly less variation in each stamp of the brush shape. Then we have density, or flow. And this determines how much paint is loaded onto each stamp of the brush. We can set this to respond to pressure so that the lighter we press, the less opaque each stamp of the brush is. And as we apply more pressure, our lines become darker. This is similar to the opacity setting, but opacity applies to the full duration of the stroke from the moment you tap your pen down to the moment you lift it up. So a lower opacity will make the full length of that stroke more transparent. If your lines are a little wobbly, you can use the stabilizer to help smooth them out. Increasing this though can create a little bit of lag and affect the performance of Magma on your machine. So if you are experiencing lag in Magma, this is one of the first settings that you want to check. Then there's your brush shape. And depending on the shape you have chosen, you'll have different settings available. With the round brush selected, you'll have the hardness setting. When you reduce the hardness, the edge of your line will be much softer, giving a sort of blurry effect. When we increase the hardness, our lines have a much harder, clearer edge. Switching over to other brush shapes unlock other settings. In most cases, these will be angle and angle jitter. Adjusting the angle slider will rotate your brush shape. And if you want each stamp of the brush to vary in its angle, you can increase the angle jitter. Now you can see that each stamp of the brush has been rotated. If you want the angle to follow the direction that you're drawing in, you can check this box, and now the brush stamp will rotate according to the direction of your line. Then we have spread. When we increase this, Stamping of the brush will happen around the point where you're drawing. A higher value will spread those stamps out much further. Unlocking this box here, we'll divide the slider into two parts, norm and tangent. This will let you control the direction of the spread. Norm applies to the spread perpendicular to the direction that you're drawing. And tangent spreads along the direction that you're drawing in. Joining those together again will spread in both directions. Spacing we've covered already, this just increases the gap between each stamp of the brush. And lastly we have our color dynamics. 
You can create jitter between the foreground and background colors that are selected just above your color wheel. With a low value, this will occasionally stamp your secondary color. As you increase that value, you'll get more of the secondary color appearing with each stamp of the brush. You can also tie this to how much pressure you're applying to your tablet. So now the lighter you press, the more of the foreground color you'll get, and as you apply more pressure, you'll get more of the background color. We can also create jitter between the different color characteristics, such as hue, saturation, and brightness. Below that, we have the different brush presets. Our free users will have a limited range of brushes available, but once you start to play around with these different settings, it really unlocks the potential for each brush. Between the tool settings and the color wheel, we have our brush presets that you can save. When you've adjusted your brush settings to something that you really like and you want to come back to, switch over to the next preset, and when you want to go back to those settings, you can simply press the corresponding number on your keypad. The eraser works in much the same way as our brush, with a lot of similar settings, except of course for the color dynamics. The hotkey for the eraser is E, but if you want to temporarily activate it while you're using your brush, press and hold E, erase the area that you want, and when you release, it switches back to your brush.